Hey everyone, welcome to Anaheim Park Tourist. Today we're actually ranking the open hotels across the street on Harbor for the Touch of Disney event. There might be more hotels that are opening in the near future, but this is kind of what has been opened and what we've stayed in. Uh, we will, there are a few caveats, and as we get to those caveats, we'll go ahead and share them. How we kind of ranked these were um, pricing, proximity to the park, our experience staying there, and customer service. Yeah, and we had different lists. We actually talked about this list, and so we kind of argued with one another. I kind of disagree with a couple of them, but Crystal made some convincing points, and so here we go. Uh, there are 11 on this list. We've thrown out two of the hotels that we stayed at, which are the Double Tree and Homewood Suites. They're just too far. And so number 11 is the Anaheim Hotel. And go ahead and share what our experience was there. Going into staying at the Anaheim Hotel, we were very excited to stay there. Um, we love mid-century design. The proximity to the parks can't be beat. Plus it has pizza press and so many good things going for it. But we unfortunately just did not have the best experience there. Um, to be fair, we did stay in, I think July. And I'll, I know there was a lot of issues at hotels in Anaheim in July with partying going on. And that's kind of what we experienced. I think also they were putting everyone in building five. And I think that contributed a lot to it. It's an older building and the walls were paper thin and we could hear the neighbor's cell phone vibrating through the wall all night. <laughs> and it sounded like it was in our room. Yeah, and um, the other neighbor was up late singing. We could hear every word they said. Um, and also we were luckily on the second floor of that building, but we did notice and felt terrible for the people that were staying under us um, that the floor vibrated a lot no matter how um, softly we tried to walk, um, it probably sounded like we were a herd of elephants upstairs. So just little things like that. I'm sure if we stayed in another building, maybe we would have had a different experience or maybe if this was a normal operating time, um, we might have had a different experience. But for our experience, we yeah. probably won't be going back, unfortunately. Yeah. And additionally, uh, there was a bad smell of Kills primer, and mm -hmm. we didn't figure that out until we saw the maintenance guys with Kills everywhere. I was placing, what does that smell like? And it was Kills. Uh, exposed tack board on the carpet, and then the bathroom was had a lot of paint. You could tell it's just been painted over constantly throughout the years, mm -hmm. and uh, the, the countertop was actually painted to look like quartz, but it was cultured marble or something underneath. So a lot of the finishes were wearing out. Uh, like I said, we would be hard pressed to stay there again. That brings us to number 10. Number 10 is gonna be a bit of a surprise, but this is one of those caveats. It's Spring Hill Suites. And we, our experience at the Spring Hill uh, kind of dictated to us that we are not gonna stay at any of those Marriott properties on that corner of Harbor and Catella. And that's the Marriott Convention Center, Residence Inn and Spring Hill Suites. Uh, there was a lot of partying going on there, and uh, when we got in our room, there were people drinking in the hallways. It sounded like a club in the hallway, loud music, um, people are banging on the walls, and so we decided, no, you know, we're not going to we're not going to stay the night here. And we went down and talked to the front desk. Their customer service was phenomenal. So uh, we have to give that to them. And we decided we're gonna try Spring Hill at a different date and time when things become normal. Additionally, the reason why we ruled out the rest of the Marriott properties, uh, there was a lot of, uh, how do I say it, shady dealings going on in the parking garage. The Marriott properties all shared a central parking garage and we just didn't like what was going on in there and we thought for certain my car would get broken into. We will definitely check them out in the future though when everything kind of goes back to normal. Yeah, so that was probably, that was back in September. So things might have changed, but that's why we rated Spring Hill so low. Inside the room, uh, it looked really nice. There was a little worn, but nothing that would say, I'm not staying here. It was a nice room. Oh yeah, I thought the room layout was wonderful. It would work great for our family. Um, yeah, some of the furniture looked a little worse for wear, but nothing terrible by any means. Yeah. Number nine on our list is the Eden Rock Hotel. 
we have stayed here and we have a video ready to go. We just haven't released that video yet. So Eden Rock is a little bit different. It's not on Harbor. It's actually on Disneyland Drive. In Catella. It's in right Catella, there. In Catella, on the corner. It's right next to the new Weston they built. And as far as location is, I know a lot of people don't really like to stay in that area and walk to the parks, but for us, it was just fine. Um, the walk really isn't that bad. The worst part of the walk is going around the giant hidden Mickey on the Disneyland <laughs> Drive. And just cause it's just out of the way. It's fun yeah, to walk through a hidden Mickey, but it's, it's a big hidden Mickey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, the hotel was really, um, it's in Motel, which a lot of the hotels in that area are. So I was really impressed with how much they had updated for this motel, but unfortunately um, they kind of, skimped in the areas that uh, really Matter made the us most. Uh, more uncomfortable, which was the bed and the bedding. And um, they only had two pillows on the bed and they were the teeniest, tiniest <laughs> little pillows. I really regretted not bringing my own pillow that trip. Um, but as far as the room goes, it was really nicely updated. Um, we did have a little snafu when we first got in our first room where it looked like they had cleaned everything but forgot to clean the flooring. And the flooring there is a hardwood floor, so it was very apparent as soon as we walked in that the floor was filthy. So we asked to be moved and they were super accommodating. The customer service was really great. They moved us to another room, which actually ended up being quite a bit bigger. And um, that room was super clean, so I think maybe housekeeping just skipped a step or yeah. missed the floor, unfortunately, but it very minor. And um, we did hear a little bit of road noise like you usually do in a motel. It wasn't anything terrible. Uh, it was a comfortable room. It just wasn't, like I would consider staying there on an arrival night if we got in late and we were splurging and staying at the Disneyland Hotel and we didn't want to pay $800 a night when we're getting there after midnight. Um, I would consider staying at the Eden Rock. Um, One other thing, uh, they're the only motel or hotel that I'm aware mm -hmm. of that has three queen beds. In one room, that's in one not room. a suite. So it has kind of a neat configuration. Yeah. Uh, other than the bedding, uh, I would say. <laughs> it was very, <laughs> it was very well kept, nice. it was clean. Um, I didn't see anything shady shenanigans going on or anything. No. Um, the walk is super easy. Yeah, I think it took me about five minutes. I have a walking video that we haven't put out yet of it and, it, and it only takes a few minutes to walk up there. It's definitely a great budget hotel. Yes. On to number eight. Uh, number eight will come as kind of a shock and we really wanted to like this hotel, but we just didn't connect with it. We couldn't find anything wrong with it and that's the Fairfield Inn. Uh, we had a great room at the Fairfield Inn. Uh, no complaints about the room, the, except for the air conditioner. The air conditioner was a little loud, uh, but we just didn't find that connection where we said, oh, we really love this hotel, but we just can't place our um, finger on why we just yeah, didn't love it. Yeah, maybe because everything was an open, like the lobby was kind of sad and nothing was open. Um, there was, wasn't a lot of people when we were there. Um, I, this was a hotel that I've always, always wanted to stay at and it was always above our budget. And so I was super excited to stay there and the view cannot be beat. No. I mean, it's a wonderful view, but it, it's also a motel, which I never realized because the walkways are outside. It's just a tall motel. Yeah, so to enjoy the view, you either have to have your curtains open, but then everybody can see into your room or you have to stand out in the, the walkway. Right. and. It's a little bit deceptive because it looks like it's super close, but then it's so far back from Harbor that it it was quite a bit of a walk. Um, but it, we, like I said, it is a nice hotel. Oh we, yeah, we, we would stay there again. Or motel, I should say, but uh, we just didn't connect with this particular motel and uh, we, we don't have a problem being there, but we just- We would definitely check it in the future, but we have our certain list of hotels that we just absolutely love and we always check and want to stay at these few select hotels mm -hmm. that we've just fallen in love with over the years and I just don't think this one's going to fall onto yeah. that list. And uh, one last thing to know, uh, because of the pandemic, uh, this is a taller hotel with elevators and we had to wait for elevators while we were staying at the hotel. Mm -hmm. uh, when we were at uh, Walt Disney World, we stayed at Coronado Springs 
and we stayed in the casitas, but we went up into the uh, Grand Destino Tower and we were talking to people and they had to wait 10 or so minutes to get a free elevator. So just note that if you're on an upper floor, be prepared to use the stairs or have wait. To wait. Mm -hmm. Yes. So number seven is a little bit surprising, but like we said at the beginning, we had some criteria to make this list. So number seven is the JW Marriott. It of course is the nicest hotel on this list. I mean, hands down, it is so nice and fancy there. It's for sure the nicest, but it's also very expensive. Yeah. It, when we stayed there, it was $300 a night and I'll go ahead and put down going rates during touch of Disney. And, uh, but it was $40 a day valet parking only. So if you're to pick up your car and go a few places, you're having to tip that valet in addition to uh, paying that $40 a day. And we just thought the parking rates were extremely high, uh, but it is hands down the best hotel. It was there. gorgeous. I mean, it's brand new. It's high end. The customer service was fantastic. Um, I mean, I would totally stay there again <laughs> yeah. if we didn't have a budget. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Budget's not a concern. This is going to be number one on your list. Yes. Number six is the Grand Legacy. We actually haven't stayed at the Grand Legacy in quite some time. It used to be our go-to hotel mm -hmm. uh, when our children were much smaller and in strollers. And then uh, just over the years, it just got more and more expensive and kind of pushed us out for budget wise. There are two original motel buildings part of the property and then a lot of people think that the uh, tower in the very back of the hotel is original but that's actually about 10 years old and we stayed in those rooms as well. There is a newer tower in the front of the hotel or motel and that is a hotel. Are we confused yet? <laughs> and so there's uh, one tower that's a hotel and then the rest of the, the property is a motel. In addition to the rooms, they have the fifth. Uh, we have not stayed at this particular hotel since the fifth has been open, but we've heard complaints on Yelp that if you have an early bedtime, uh, the noise may bother you because they do play a lot of loud music there. I believe it shuts down around 11 p.m. Uh, other than that, the, the property is actually pretty nice. Uh, we have no problems staying there. Mm -hmm. And uh, the reason why we gave it number six is uh, probably because the fifth was loud. And if you're an early sleeper, early riser, um, that may interfere with your sleep schedule. Now we're on to our top five and the top five are really, really hard for us to pick. This is where we kind of argued a bit. <laughs> yeah, and... we would stay at all of these hands down, no question about it. So, you know, don't, it, if one's ranked a little higher than another one, doesn't mean it's like 10 times better. It just means they're all really wonderful. Yes. And so we had to, we just had to put it in a ranking. And so, uh, you want to go ahead and with number five, <laughs> number five is the sun coast hotel. And we the, love the sun coast. We loved this hotel. It had wonderful customer service. It has electric vehicle charging. Um, the rooms were super new, refreshed. It smelled great. There was no funky smells. The room layout was wonderful. We actually got a view room of the parks. And while you are a little bit further away, it was still really neat to open the drapes and see um, Guardians of the Galaxy and stuff like that. It was, that was neat. And um, it's just a wonderful hotel. I would totally stay there again in a heartbeat. And the, really the only reason we knocked it a little bit further down the list is because of the proximity to the parks. It is not right on Harbor. It's mm -hmm. about two it's, it's large a, blocks away. Yeah, <laughs> we have a walking video, I'll link it. And it's kitty corner to the garden walk. Yeah, it's about as far as the JW. Mm -hmm. And uh, the reason why it's higher than the JW is just the cost. It's a lot cheaper. Mm -hmm. uh, it takes about 16 minutes or so to walk from uh, walk from the Sun Coast over to the gates of Disneyland. And, you know, that's from the two of us where I'm six foot, Crystal's five nine. And so we may have a bigger stride than some. So it can take you a little bit longer or a little shorter if you walk faster. For us, it wasn't an issue now that our kids are older and can walk that distance without an issue. I know a lot of people 
really prefer to stay directly across the street on Harbor, so that was another reason why it's a little bit further down the list. Yes. <laughs> Number four is the Indigo. We really like the Indigo. Uh, we stayed there in July when California first reopened, and it was probably one of the most bizarre trips we've ever taken in our life. And uh, the customer service, though, was outstanding. I, I think they just reopened, and so there was a few confu little confusion and whatnot, but that's, that's to be expected. Uh, the room was quiet. I think we are one of three guests at the hotel. Um, there was nobody parked there at the time. And uh, whether, I don't know how new the hotel is or if they went through a recent remodel, but uh, the hotel furnishings were starting to show a little wear, but that's really the only thing we can knock it for. Mm -hmm. And uh, the size of the room was small. So if there were three or four suitcases, you may have a hard time fitting it in that room, you're probably uh, individually taking your stuff out and then packing things back up because there just wasn't a lot of room in that Yeah, there wasn't room. a lot of extra space for luggage and things like that. But that was it. Um, mm -hmm. It's got a nice little pool, it's got a nice cabana area, and we think it's a great place to potentially um, stay. Number three is the Tropicana. The Tropicana is so close yeah. to and, the crosswalk to get to and Disneyland. This is where Crystal and I started getting into arguments here, but she, we'll explain. <laughs> we'll explain as we go through the list. So the Tropicana is a motel, but they have done an excellent job renovating. I mean, they touched every surface in that room. The ceilings are scraped. There's recessed lighting. All the flooring is new. All the tiles new. The vanity is new. Everything is new. They have a lot of extra details, like an, a chair that folds out into another bed. They have two luggage racks, um, a microwave and a refrigerator. Um, the sink was separate from the toilet and the shower. And it wasn't the most spacious room, but it was clean. It smelled good. Beds were comfortable. The beds were super comfortable, tons of pillows. We would definitely stay there again in a heartbeat. And probably there were uh, there was two things that differentiated number three and two. Parking fees are going up. Uh, I believe to uh, offhand, I think it's seventeen dollars plus tax, so yeah. tw maybe twenty dollars. And uh, the number two offers a grab and go breakfast. Yes. And so that's the that was what sit differentiated the two. Just little minor things. Yeah, uh, however, I think this was probably one of the quietest motels mm -hmm. that we stayed at uh, because it's it has it's kind of protected all around. And so a lot of that car noise does not come into the actual motel. So we really enjoyed our stay there. Yes. On to number two, and that is the Best Western Plus Anaheim Inn. We actually enjoyed our stay quite a bit there. Uh, one really standout feature that we thought was kind of Dumb when we walked in the room were the two chairs by the window and initially we thought who would jam these little chairs in here and uh, we ended up filming our pizza press video which I'll link and it was actually a really pleasant place to have a meal together mm -hmm. and what I liked was two people and two chairs so we got to be comfortable and eat our meal instead of one person being stuck on the bed. Uh, the remainder of the room was nicely uh, remodeled. Uh, the ceilings were scraped. Uh, the vanity area was huge and you can store a ton of stuff in that area including strollers and whatnot. The bathroom was clean and the beds were comfortable so uh, it was really a nice uh, place to stay and spend the night. Uh, in addition it did have a grab-and-go breakfast which included a Danish a cutie, a granola bar, and bottled water. Mm -hmm. And and the parking there is a very affordable $5. Right. So it's one of those things that, you know, when you add the parking and everything, it really, and proximity to the park, it's really a great place to stay. Uh, probably the one minor, minor complaint we had was Denny's next door was stuck doing outdoor dining because of the tier we were in at that point in time. Uh, which I believe will be gone when Touch of Disney opens up. And uh, there was a little bit of noise about three in the morning that briefly woke us up, uh, but it wasn't too much of an issue at all. And also their customer service was really amazing. The manager spoke to me several times and she just made me feel so at home. And I thought to myself, why have we not stayed here before? <laughs> yes, yeah, so it, we just had a really great experience here. and. Like we said, the top five 
are just very minor, minor differences between all yes. of them. So uh, this was really, really, uh, you know, we love the Tropicana and whatnot. Jim wanted Tropicana to be number two. <laughs> yes. But I argued that the parking fee was more affordable and they provided breakfast at the Best Western. Yes. So to me, that made it beat out the Tropicana just a little bit. Yes. <laughs> If you've seen our reviews, you might have guessed what is number one, but number one is the Wyndham. And yes, the Wyndham is further away. It is on almost on the corner of Catella and Harbor, so it is a little bit further of a walk. But this hotel... It is a hotel. It is a hotel, yes. It just checked all the boxes for us. Um, free parking. Free parking. Amazing customer service. The manager, Ozzy, used to be the manager at the Grand Legacy when it was the Ramada Main Gate, and that's when we stayed there quite often. He remembered us, <laughs> it's been years. He remembered us, and then also Stacy, that works at the front desk was incredible and also remembered us because we called very last minute after our Spring Hill Suites debacle and she got us a room that night. She even remembered our last name from a month prior. I mean, she, just amazing yeah, customer she service. She offered us uh, to charge our car, yeah. said, I'll put a cone out, and uh, if you brought your charging cable with us, <laughs> I don't know, we left it at home, but. Yeah, just it was so sweet and so welcoming. It's a beautiful hotel. It's all been redone really recently. The rooms are super spacious. They would work perfectly for our family of four. Um, they're so nicely um, updated, plus all the amenities, which is a fridge and a microwave, plus an extra couch in the room. And we always like to have extra seating in the room besides just the beds. And, um, you know, you really don't have that, that many hotels in the area that offer free parking anymore. So... Yeah, it's that, in, the Indigo does, uh, the Wyndham does, and Howard Johnson's and Candy King. If I uh, this Johnson. is off. This yeah. is off the top of my head. Howard Johnson and Candy Cane are not currently open, so we're not sure if that will still be the case when they do reopen. Um, but we just had a really good experience there. Yeah. Uh, we stayed there twice mm -hmm. since uh, Disneyland has been closed, and we really enjoyed it quite a bit. We hope you enjoyed our ranking of the hotels. If you have any questions, please feel free to let us know down in the comment box below. We realize there are probably more open hotels than our, what is on our list. We know for sure the Four Point Sheraton is open, but in our opinion, that's uh, really far away, especially for this Touch of Disney event. Um, it's a lot further of a walk, so we didn't add that onto our list. Yeah. And we're probably sure a lot more hotels will be opening in the near future, especially when Disneyland announces an opening date. If you have any questions or comments or any specific question for any of these hotels, please let us know in the comment box below. We're hoping to stay at a lot more of the hotels that have not reopened yet and give you guys all a review and a tour of our room. So please stay tuned for that. Thank you so much for watching. We really appreciate each and every one of you, so thank you.